Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to show you the quick and easy way to reset any fault code data stored on your VFR 800 VTEC. Um, the, uh, the manual does tell you that you need to remove the upper cowling. However, I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way where you only need to take the side panel off and you don't need to uh, remove the top cowl. So stick along and uh, let's get into it. Okay, the reason why the, uh, the manual tells you that you need to remove the upper cowling is because the service uh, reset connector is actually located up and around here. Um, there's a couple of relays that live in this area behind this plastic um, and the connector for those is basically in the same section of loom as them. However, instead of taking this off, take the side panel off which is pretty straightforward and you've got your ECU. What we're going to do, remove this single bolt Just the one bolt. Pop that to one side. And then what we can do is pop this little cowling off. As you can see, it's got a tang there and a tang there. So it kind of comes out like that and then it'll slide out. And then the ECU itself is just here. Now you can, it's up to you. You can either disconnect the cables and move it out of the way or just tuck it out like that. Pretty simple. And then up in here, we will see the indicator reset when I get hold of it, which is just there. There it is. That is how we um, delete the fault codes and or read the fault codes. So this is what we need to do. And all you need to do is bridge them with a little bit of wire. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, what we need, small piece, uh, small piece of wire, little paper clips, but absolutely perfect. We need to make sure that the ignition is in the off position. Um, you can turn this off, it does tell you to turn it off in a manual, but it makes absolutely no difference whether that's off or on or not. Um, we, so I'm just going to leave it on and just turn the uh, key on when we uh, come to check. Taking your little piece of wire and your connector, what we're going to do is we are simply going to bridge the terminals just like so. It's as simple as that. Right, now what we're gonna do is we are going to turn the key and the fuel, um, the FI light that normally comes on when you turn the ignition on. Um, if there's no problems whatsoever, it should come on and stay on. If there is a problem, that light will be blinking. So what we'll do, we'll turn the ignition on. Here's the light that we're looking for, the one with the FI on it. As you can see, absolutely solid. And that means that there are currently no fault codes with, uh, with this bike. So we'll turn it off. What I'm actually gonna do now is I'm gonna lift the tank up and I'm gonna deliberately introduce a problem, um, which um, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the, uh, the map sensor because it's quite accessible, quite easy to do. And then what I'll do, I'll fire the bike up. That should um, store a code then because the bike won't be able to see the, uh, the map sensor. So that should store a code. And then what we'll do is we'll go through the process again and we'll look at the codes. Okay, what I've done, I've um, disconnected the map sensor, the manifold air pressure sensor, and um, started the bike up. It did throw the light on, um, which, which I expected, um, but obviously I know what the problem is. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the uh, process of um, reading the codes, and it's pretty straightforward, and all you need to do is count blinks. So what I'm gonna do, go through the same procedure again. I'm gonna fit my, um, fit my little piece of wire back into the connector again, if I can get it in. Come on. Get in there. Get a bit of wire back in the connector to bridge the pins. There we go. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the ignition on. What I'm expecting to see is the FI light come on, but then start blinking. Now, the number of blinks that it makes determines the code that I would expect to see. Now, I happen to know um, from the manual that the code for uh, the map sensor disc, um, a problem with the wiring to the map sensor is one. 
Um, if there's a problem with the vacuum connection to the map sensor, it's two. So what I would expect to see is one blink or two blinks, but I've disconnected the cable, so I should expect to see one blink. Now, um, the ECU stores codes all the way up to 33. From one to 33, there's a few numbers that it misses out, but basically between one and 33. And um, effectively what it does is it blinks the number of times it needs to in order to tell you which of those numbers it is. Then all you need to do is look in the manual, compare that number of blinks to the number in the table and it will tell you what the problem is. Now, what it does is if, if the number is higher than 10 or higher than 20 or higher than 30, what it will do is it will do long blinks. Um, each blink normally would be half a second. A long blink is classed as 1.3 seconds per blink. A 1.3 second blink equals 10. So, for example, if you got two 1.3 second blinks followed by two 0.5 second blinks, the code that you're expecting is 22. Hopefully you understand that. If you got one 1.3 second blink followed by 3.5 second blinks, then that code is 13. Hopefully you follow me, it's pretty straightforward, and the table is in the manual. Um, what I'll do, I'll put, the t I'll put a, a little image of the table up um, at the end of the video so you can um, compare any codes that you've got. Right, so moving in here, we'll get the FI light up, we'll turn the ignition on, and what we should get is one blink. And there we go. As you can see, one little blink, and it repeats itself, just like so. Now, what it's doing is, obviously it just keeps repeating that blink, but there's, there's quite a pause between each one. So it's just a single um, 0.5 second blink saying code one. If, um, if, they, if it was like obviously 10, it would be, we would have had a, a 1.3 second blink um, or, uh, you know, or any combination of those figures. Uh, and what it will do is if it's got more than one code stored, um, it will, go through them all in order. So uh, in numerical order, by, uh, I mean by that. So it would start at say three, then it would display any codes for higher than that, five, seven, whatever. Uh, and it'll keep doing that until such time as you stop it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove my piece of wire. I'm going to reconnect my map sensor. And then what we're gonna do is gonna clear the codes and I'll show you how to do that next. Right, now then. I've reconnected the uh, the map sensor, and what we need to do is we need to um, reset it. Now, to reset it, the process is as follows. We need to put the little jumper wire back into the connector, turn the ignition on. What will happen is the MIL light, uh, malfunction indicator lamp is what the, uh, the, um, the book calls it, but for our purpose, FI light. The FI light will come on um, for five seconds. During that five seconds, what we need to do is pull the wire out and put it back in again. It's got to be done before the light extinguishes. So you, you have to be quite quick with it. So in this order, fit the cable, uh, fit the jumper, turn the ignition on, light comes on for five seconds, pull the pin, put it back in, codes are reset. You'll know it's reset because the, the FI light will start blinking. Um, it's not blinking the code, it's just flashing. Um, then you can turn the ignition off and we're done. So what we'll do, we'll run through that and um, I'll show you how we do it. So first things first, we're gonna jump the connector. Just like so. I'm gonna be really quick here. I'm gonna turn the ignition on and the FI light will come on. And there you go. As you can see, we're now flashing really quickly. That means that I've erased all the trouble data. It was, I did it pretty quickly. Hopefully you understand what I did. So the, the light comes on for five seconds. I pull the pin out, put it straight back in within that five second window. And as you'll know, you've done it right because the FI light will start blinking just as it did there. And then we're all good. So I can now pull it out, turn the ignition on. Start light. As you can see, the FI light has gone out. It's not lit up and we're all good. So, there we are. It's, it's um, pretty straightforward. Um, something that a lot of people probably haven't given any consideration to. I quite like the fact that on these FI bikes, 
um, you, you know, you, you have the option of reading codes. It gives you a good indicator as to where you need to look if you've got a problem with your bike, if it's not running correctly, or even if you've got a light on, it gives you, uh, gives you a good indicator. Anyway, guys, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you all again for the next one. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye now. Thank you.